I'm now going to show you something which I think many people associate with spreadsheets actually, even if it's not necessarily the main purpose of spreadsheets. That is creating what are going to be simple for now, charts and graphs in the software. There is a distinction between a chart and a graph. They are often used interchangeably and I certainly use them interchangeably inadvertently. A chart is more visual and so we're going to look at a pie chart and a bar chart. So the bar itself or the pie segment is that visual aspect. A graph is more mathematical and doesn't have some visual aid. I have now opened Microsoft Excel again by searching for it. I loaded my file by going to file and open and found my file, the file that I saved in the last video where we just created this basic table. I now want to convert this table into first of all a bar chart using the data stored within this table. So really I want to be able to show the goals in a more visual way to compare them because a table is not always brilliant at comparisons, especially a long table, it's not always easy, easy to see how they relate to each other, the different rows. Thankfully, Microsoft Excel does a lot of the hard work for us when we want to create a graph or chart. This is, this is all hidden away mostly in the Insert tab. So if you go to Insert, down here in your Charts, as in your Charts group is where you have your both charts and graphs. We've got a bunch of options here, some of which we'll explore in the future. We're only going to look at bar charts, pie charts and line graphs today. So the first thing you need to do is select your data so that it knows so it knows what data to use in the graph. And we do this by dragging and selecting like this. You can select for column heading. It is smart enough to know that it's a heading and to treat it separately. And so if I drag this and also if I... So I want in my graph, I want the names on the bottom on my x-axis and I want the goals on the y-axis. The names column, if we were doing an experiment in science, this would be called our independent variable. This is what we're interested in investigating and goals is what we're measuring. So the goals are coming from the name of the player, which makes sense. The goals should be on the y-axis and the names should be on the x-axis because the goals would be the dependent variable. That is not massively crucial to know, but our graph would look very weird. In fact, it may not even work if we got that mixed up wrong. And so we want to select both the name and the goals. I don't particularly care about the clubs for the time being. To be able to select both this column and this column and not the clubs column. If I try now select the goals column, I lose my selection for the names column. And I want both at the same time. So to get both at the same time, if I select the names column again, and if I on my keyboard hold down the control button, so often it's shorted to shortened to CTRL, if I hold down that button at the same time as dragging along the goals column, I can now right click and go to copy or hold down control C. It now does a little fancy animation to show that it has selected it and we haven't selected the middle column, which is fine. Now if I go to my charts group up here, and I'm looking for a bar chart, we've got some bars here. If I select this drop down arrow, we get more options, and now you can, if we hover over each one, you can see it's already doing a lot of work for us, and it can do different formatting. So we've got 3D and 2D, some vertical, some horizontal bar charts. Let's just do the simplest one, top left one, which is fine for our purposes. I should explain why I've chosen, if I drag this over, I should explain why I've chosen a bar chart for this data, first of all. This data on the left-hand side is what we would call either discrete or categorical data. It doesn't form a nice continuous series, right? Jamie Vardy cannot magically morph into Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. They're two separate people, they're two separate bits of data. If we had We'll do a line graph later, but a line graph is really good at continuous data where we can have a nice connected plot. Here we want our bars to be separate because the people are separate. So Excel has kindly done a lot of work for us. By the way, it might be worth showing what would happen if I delete this on my keyboard. If I instead selected all three columns, and let's go back to insert, get the exact same graph again. You can see if I had that third of that middle column, the club, if you're not careful selecting it, you can get sort of confusion in your graph. We've got three variables now as opposed to two, which is not ideal. It sort of makes sense to have the clubs above the names, but I don't like it. I don't want that. So I go back and let me just, let's just go back on my keyboard actually to get back to our graph before, not my keyboard up here. I mean, undo. Okay, back where we are. So let's say if we click this, we can go up to chart design at the top. This is a new tab, which is created once we have a graph to click on. I can now change the style again if I want to. Let's change it to this one. It's a little bit cleaner. 
Your notice of the graph is good, but it's not perfect. There are some things you might want to change. First of all, we haven't got any axes labels. We've got names down here, but we may not know much about football. We may not know who these people are. So if we if we go over here, we've got three options which sort of appear next to our graph once we have clicked on it. A plus, a paintbrush, and a sort of final filter type thing. The one at the top of the plus, if we click this one, we get a few more elements which haven't been selected or have been selected. We can see little ticks. We are, mix, we, are, we are missing our axis titles. If I click this, we now have a title alongside our axes, which is better in terms of the user knowing what's going on. So I could type in uh, here, I could type in, if I can even select it, football players. I can make it a bit bigger if I want to by going over here and increasing it. It's only nine now, which is quite small. I can drag this text box, text box to make it in a better place. Same with our y-axis, this is the number of goals like that. Let's make it a bit bigger and drag it. Now, there is an issue with this y-axis in that our units are not really appropriate. Um, we start off at 14.5, which is not ideal to start a graph off without zero. Ideally, it should be zero. In this case, because we are not anywhere near zero, maybe it's okay. But the issue is more that we are going up in increments of 0.5 we're going from 14.5 to 15 you can't score 14.5 goals it doesn't make sense so in some contexts this automatic graph might be perfect but actually for us this axis is not great because the units are not what makes sense in our context we can change this by clicking on the numbers here and if in fact if we double click on the numbers here we should double click again maybe we should get a window pop up over here and it says format access here, format access. And if we go over to, in fact, it's already on the sort of access options. We can also change other stuff about it. But for one on the far right, the access options, here we can change the different units of our access. So sometimes they're fine, but sometimes you need to adapt them manually. So here you can see the minimum is 14.5, and the maximum is 19.5. Excel doesn't know that that doesn't really make that much sense. So if I change the minimum to zero, um, you'll see that actually it does fix our strange half increase, but it does look a bit weird. So actually, let's go back to what it was before. Go hit reset because maybe 14.5 is okay. But down here, we've got the units. It says the major unit is 0.5, which is the largest gap. And the minor unit is 0.1. That's the smallest gap. We can't see it here. The major gap, we want to be to 1, not 0.5. If I click away, our axis now gets fixed because it's not going up in 0.5 anymore. It's going up in terms of 1. But now our maximum is 20. Let's change this back to 19, which is the maximum. And it now looks a bit better. Our title is a bit weird. It's taken the goal heading to be the title for some reason. So let's change this by double clicking and changing it to what we call what it was before, Premier League top goal scorers and click away. So now we're pretty much back where we want it to be. It looks much better than the original graph, which was generated. Let's now show how this data will look in a pie chart, which can be better at showing how each item relate to each other. So let's do this in a separate sheet. So I didn't mention this in the last couple of videos, but in our workbook, which is what this file is, we can have multiple sheets and a, more, and a different sheet can separate out our work. And so usually in a proper workbook, you might have several sheets at the bottom and you can switch between them to move back and forth between different bits and pieces. So why don't we rename sheet one by right clicking and going to rename and call this one bar chart like that and click away and now let's add a second sheet and call this and rename this again call this one pie chart and let's go back to my bar chart sheet by clicking it and clicking this and copying this right click copy and if I paste this bar chart into my uh, second sheet and zoom in a bit this is zoomed out and actually it's quite useful because what we can do if we click this and go up to our chart design at the top what we can do over here in the type group is select change chart type. And now it will let me change my change my graph without having to do everything again. So if I go down here to the pie section, again, we get a few different crazy looking options. Let's go over the simplest one and click OK. And now it's going to convert our data to a pie chart, but not particularly well. There is an issue because we are missing the names. We don't know which color corresponds to which footballer. So like we did with the axes titles, which are missing, we go to the plus and add in a legend to this. A legend is a way we can, it shows us what the color represents. 
because a pie chart is about showing how, the size in comparison to the whole. Actually, because the items here are very, very similar, it doesn't show massively well, but in some cases it might be more dramatic. We can also add in data labels to actually show the numbers. That may be more helpful in certain cases if you actually care about the actual numbers as opposed to the size. You can click the numbers, actually all four are selected here, and make them bigger. Same with your legend if you really want to, uh, and drag it across because it gets a bit squashed like that. If you wanted to change the colors like we did with the table, we changed it back in the bar chart sheet. We can see our table. We changed Leicester to dark blue, Arsenal Liverpool to red, and Manchester City to light blue. If we want to do the same with our bar, with our pie chart segments, we can click on our individual segment. And over here on our little um, side panel, it says Format Data Series. That means it wants to change the color. If we go to the um, Fill and Line tab, change the fill to all of our segments, which doesn't really make sense. So instead, make sure if you want to change an individual segment, you double click on this or click again, sorry. When it says format data point, you know you have selected it properly. So click and make sure it says format data point and then go over to this paint bucket where it says fill in line and change the color to whatever color you want to. So this is for Aguero, which would be light blue. For Vardy is dark blue, it's fine. For Aubameyang, we want this to be red. And the issue is we've got two reds here, so it doesn't quite work. But we can leave uh, Salah as, I don't know, so if you awake it for Liverpool, maybe grey. So you can change colours like that if you want to. So that is a fairly simple pie chart. I cheated a bit by copying and pasting it and changing it from the bar chart. If you needed to select the data again and you didn't have it before, you do it in the exact same way as your bar chart. You just hold it down and drag over and then go insert and insert a pie chart as opposed to a bar chart. Let's now look at how we can use a line chart. Right, so what I've done is created a third sheet down here, again by pressing the plus button and then renaming it to line graph this time. So now I can organize my free graphs. I've had to create a new table because like I say, our previous table is not really appropriate for a line graph. You could create a line graph, it just wouldn't really fit what a line graph should be. It should work with more continuous data. So what I've done is going back to the Premier League's website is just taking more data by clicking I did Jamie Vardy's name because he was top goal scorer and it shows the goals he scored in different seasons. And so in my spreadsheet, I've just done the year. So a season goes over two years really. So it's, it's sort of continuous, but years are continuous, right? We can split 2019 halfway through. So it's continuous in the sense we can keep going. It hasn't got too, it's not like we jump from 2019 to 2020 without any days going by, even if, you know, over New Year's Eve, we sort of do. So it's more suitable for a line graph. And I've got the goals as our sort of dependent variable. Again, same process here. It's a little bit simpler because I haven't got that middle column to ignore. So we don't have to hold down control. I just drag over these two and make sure we get all of it. Go to insert and go to this time we want to go to. So we have a line graph option here. But if I hover over any of them, they are a little bit broken. They don't really fit what I want. So let's leave those for the time being. We can fix them, but actually let's go to a scatter graph because a scatter graph, if we choose the correct scatter graph, has a, um, ha can have a line connecting it. So if I click this one, this one seems to look all right. I click it, I get my graph again. It looks fairly good, but there are things we can do to improve this. Let's again go to the plus and add in some access titles. It's really important to do this. So let's call this, uh, let's call this year. And let's call the y-axis uh, goals, or goals scored. Again, it's taken the title. Let's change this to my title on the left-hand side, which is Jamie Vardy's goals per season. Like that, maybe we wanted to see what other charts we have available. That one looks quite cool. You've got to be careful if you're doing it for a really professional purpose because it's quite easy to choose one which looks quite cool and actually it's not really fitting your house style. So, but that one is fine for us. Uh, I won't make it bigger because that's okay. Let's have a look at our axes first. So axes, you could be happy with these. What I don't like about the axes is that we have, starting at zero I like, but we are ending at 30 and so we have sort of this gap at the top and it's sort of rubbing it into Vardy he hasn't scored 30 goals. So we might want to get rid of it end at say 25 and likewise we are not in 2021 so we don't need that one and 2014 he didn't even play in the Premier League then so it doesn't have any data so we may as well try and shorten these axes again we have to select 
our actual axis itself where the text is and we can change the minimum and maximum bounds here let's change the maximum one to 2020 and the minimum one to 2015 like that and now the x-axis is fixed at least it looks a bit more crowded maybe but it makes more sense for our context and we can also change the y-axis by clicking this one instead and changing this maximum to let's do 25 like that so we have a tiny gap at the top but it looks better now here because the years and in particular the seasons are quite categorical a line graph is not is, is okay but is not maybe uh, necessary but generally if you've got time as your x-axis as your independent variable a line graph will be really good because it's very good at showing trends you can see here he uh, had a big jump and then he sort of was fairly consistent we can see a trend we can also look between our actual recorded data points and what we call interpolate and see what value he may have got midway through a year say so it's good for analysis I would now recommend you try and replicate these two graphs. One is a bar chart at the top and one is a pie chart at the bottom. The data, the table which the data came from was from the last try now, but honestly you can work back and create a table looking at the graphs hopefully. So you can work backwards and then work forwards to replicate them. Try and match them up totally. So we've got a 3D pie chart here because it's a skill to be able to match something you see. And also you need to play around otherwise you won't really be able to learn the stuff.